Hey folks, welcome back to another video. So in this one, we're gonna look at Nina version 111, nightly build, uh, specifically moving from the simple sequencer to the advanced sequencer. Now, the next part of this video, I actually recorded a few weeks ago, and I, I, I began recording it because I had a number of people at the time asking me how to migrate from the simple sequencer in version 111 to the advanced sequencer. They, they didn't know how to do it. Um, and if you don't know how to do it, you don't know how to do it, so uh, this was a great way to show them was to just do a video. So um, these are people that are using version 111. They've they've moved from version 110 to version 111. Uh, they know how to get their equipment set up and, and connected and whatnot. Um, they are using the simple sequencer still in version 111, but they want to move to the the advanced sequencer to take advantage of the uh, the powerful features within it but they don't know how to, and they're not sure how to set up an advanced sequence. So this is a great way to learn how to do that. This is how I did it anyways, uh, when I first started using version 111, and I found it a little challenging to understand the advanced sequencer. I, uh, I used the simple sequencer to migrate to the advanced sequencer, so I understood how the advanced sequencer was set up and where things go and, and basically how it works, how to set up a, a sequence to uh, image for the night. So let's get over to Nina and we'll have a look at how it's done. So we're in Nina and I've got everything connected. The, uh, tonight's clear, which is great. So I'm gonna be doing some imaging, but uh, I just wanted to do this video uh, real quick because um, I had the opportunity to do it here. So what I did was I, uh, started with the simple sequence uh, sequencer and I moved that over to the advanced sequencer and that gave me a really good um, uh, idea uh, look at how the advanced sequencer is supposed to be set up and and where I can go from there with it so uh, basically what I what I do is uh, I went to the framing uh, assistant and uh, typed in an object uh, let's use uh, IC 1396 we'll say and we'll just select that we'll uh, load the image and so this shows me the, the framing of it and whatnot but uh, just to keep on on topic here uh, what I wanted to do was send this over to the simple sequencer and I did that by uh, adding to a sequence um, so I would click on add target to sequence and click on simple sequencer and it's going to transfer um, IC 1396 over to the simple sequencer where we can then set up our sequencing uh, or our sequence run uh, for the night and uh, or at least one of them anyways depending on how many objects you're going to uh, try to image on a given night uh, but let's just say we're just doing one so we're now in the simple sequencer and this is a great way to get things set up properly for the advanced sequencer so that you can see how it's done, how it's laid out, and how uh, how best to use the, the advanced sequencer. So what you want to do here is now that you're in the simple sequencer, um, you have some options here that you can set in, uh, in designing your, your sequence or your imaging run. So you can choose to cool the camera uh, if you haven't already cooled it. I typically cool my camera when I start Nina so I don't enable this, but you could um, have the camera cool uh, before you start the imaging run if, you, if it isn't cooled already, so you could enable that. Um, if your mount is parked, you can uh, unpark it. You can set that command. You can turn that on or off. Um, again, I've already unparked my mount, so I don't need to turn that on. Meridian flip, I'm going to leave on, though. It's on by default, and, and that's a good thing. Uh, we want the mount to uh, do a flip, uh, uh, you know, throughout the night as it's imaging so that uh, it doesn't uh, crash or anything. Um, and uh, over here, we can set to, uh, we have our uh, end of sequence uh, options, which is to warm the camera and park the mount, which is fine if uh, uh, there is uh, no other reason for you to keep the camera cold uh, and, and whatnot. So um, you can set those options. You can turn them off or on, but we're going to leave them on. And 
If we go down below, we see the name of our, our uh, target. So IC1396. And you can set uh, delay start. Uh, you don't have to uh, because we're going to move over to the uh, advanced sequencer and there's going to be uh, options there for us to, uh, to, to handle that. But uh, we want to make sure that uh, we're setting up the sequence mode, right? So one after another. So basically what it's going to do is it is going to shoot all of the uh, luminance files and it's going to shoot all of the uh, red images, I should say, luminance Im images. It's going to shoot the red images and the green images and so forth. If you choose loop, it's going to basically go through. It's going to shoot a uh, luminance, then it's going to shoot a red, then it's going to shoot a green, then shoot a blue and so forth. Um, I usually, uh, it, this is a preference, uh, however you like to do it. Um, I try to minimize autofocus uh, times and, and whatnot. So I shoot uh, a sequence of luminance and then I uh, shoot a bunch of red and I shoot a bunch of green and blue and so forth and just do it like that so that I minimize the amount of autofocusing that has to be done switching between filters. And uh, okay, so we're gonna leave that at one after another. Um, don't worry about the estimated time download. Uh, don't need to worry about that. Um, estimated time of finish again. We don't need to worry about that. So basically what we want to do is get into the target options. Okay. So in the target options, you're going to want to set it to slew to your target and you want it to plate solve. So you're going to turn center target on. And if you have a rotator and you've set a rotation factor, you could turn this on, but I don't have a rotator, so I'm not going to turn it on. And we want uh, the auto guiding to begin, so we're going to turn that on as well. So we've got some of our uh, preliminary or, or beginning uh, steps for the uh, image sequence uh, already set now. And the next thing that we want to do is look at the autofocus uh, setup. And here you've got um, different options available to you. And you can set it to uh, autofocus on a filter change um, after a said uh, period of time, after a number of exposures. Uh, if the temperature changes, you can have it autofocus and whatnot. Um, you can choose what works best for your situation. Uh, typically I uh, autofocus every 30 minutes. So what I do is I, I do a manual autofocus at the beginning of the night and then I just have it set to autofocus every 30 minutes. If you feel that you need to autofocus on filter change, um, you can enable that. No, uh, there's no right or wrong here. It's whatever's gonna work for you and get the job done. So I'm going to set uh, the elapsed time to 30 minutes and I'm not going to worry about the rest of them because it's going to autofocus every 30 minutes anyways. So I'm not really concerned about temperature changes or HFR increases or anything like that. Um, so you can set your autofocus uh, uh, um, parameters and, and then once that is done, if we just close these up because they're finished, we can now um, indicate what we want to do with regards to our filters. So this is enabled by default and uh, you're going to put in the total number of uh, light frames that you want to take. Um, so let's just say we're going to shoot an hour. So we'll do, uh, I'm going to say five minute subs. I'm going to use five minute subs. You might use uh, uh, two minute or three minute or 10 minute uh, up to you. But in this example here, we're going to use five minute subs. So I'm going to shoot 12 of them at uh, 300 seconds, which is an hour. So I'm going to do an hour. It's going to be a light frame and I'm going to set it for my luminance filter. Binning I've got set at one by one and I'm going to turn dither on. Um, I dither every frame. You don't have to. I like to do that. That's the way I've done it um, over the years. Uh, you can set it to dither every three frames, say, or something, but whatever works for you. Uh, but this is where you can set your, your dither. And of course, whatever you've got set for your gain and your offset for your camera is um, being uh, uh, brought into the simple sequencer um, here. And it shows that it's uh, what the gain is and what the offset is. So we've got uh, the luminance filter set up. And now we can actually click the plus sign at the bottom and we can just change the filter because everything else is gonna stay the same. So we're gonna change it to red so we want to shoot an hour of red and we want to shoot 
uh, an hour of green and we want to shoot an hour of blue okay so we've got all of our filters set up and we can transfer this over to the advanced sequencer now and we'll get a really good idea of how to set up the advanced sequencer for your image runs um, I actually did this when I started out, uh, started using Nina and they introduced the advanced sequencer. It was, uh, it, it seemed, it was a little complicated for me. Um, it took me a while to get used to the advanced sequencer, but I, I did it this way because um, it helped me understand the advanced sequencer and uh, how to set it up. So this is a, a great way if you're learning Nina to, uh, and, and you're interested in the advanced sequencer, the, the powerful capabilities of the advanced sequencer, this is a great way to start uh, learning it. So we've got our simple sequence set up, okay? We've got our, um, uh, target op start option set and our end option set. Uh, we've got our uh, looping conditions or one after another set. Uh, we've got target uh, options uh, set. So we're, we're slewing to the target, we're centering on it, and we're starting the auto guider. And we've got our autofocus set up. And we've got our filters set up for how many images, how many subs you want to take, and for how long. So the next thing you're going to do at this point is you're going to go down here. And I'm just going to disable so that you can see it. I'm going to turn my webcam off there so that you can see it. The button right here, you're going to... Don't click the play button because that's going to run this, this simple sequence and you don't want to run it. You want to transfer it over to the advanced sequencer. So uh, you're going to click this button right down here. We're going to click that and it's going to give you a pop-up. It's, it's basically a warning that's it's saying um, it's going to export all of this to the advanced sequencer and there's no going back. Um, once you've transferred over to the advanced sequencer, you, you can't go back to the simple sequencer for this particular um, uh, sequence. Uh, so anyways, we're going to say yes because we want to do that. And you click yes and it transfers, it exports all of that, uh, all those parameters for in the simple sequencer over to the advanced sequencer. And now we can see um, how uh, an imaging run, a sequence, is set up in the advanced sequencer. We've got our uh, global triggers, uh, which is the meridian flip. Uh, we can add other global triggers there if we um, uh, want to. And below we've got our target and the target name, and we've got its... Uh, uh, right ascension and declination. Um, this is where the rotation would have been set if uh, I was using a rotator. It shows the instructions that will be carried out. Okay, so this is the, the beginning of the uh, sequence. So it's going to uh, switch filters. If, if it's not set to the loom, luminance filter, it's going to switch to the luminance filter. And it's going to slew and center on the target. And once that's done, uh, it's going to start the auto guiding. I don't need to enable force calibration because it's already calibrated. And then it will begin imaging. It'll start with a smart exposure for the uh, luminance frames and it'll complete 12 five minute uh, light frames for the luminance filter. It'll then switch to the red filter and do the same uh, and and it'll do switch to the green and, and again do the same and the blue uh, will be completed as well and it will autofocus every 30 minutes remember we set that to autofocus every 30 minutes so every 30 minutes it's going to uh, autofocus no matter what filter it's on um, it's going to do that and it's going to keep things nice and sharp and if we go down a little farther here we've got some closure instructions so uh, the stop auto guiding is uh, is set in in this uh, sequence, so that uh, when the uh, all of the light frames uh, are completed, when the imaging run is completed, it's going to stop auto guiding, and then it'll uh, proceed to the uh, the end instructions, uh, the instructions at the end of the sequence, which is to uh, warm the camera and park the scope. 
And that is uh, a great way to get yourself into the advanced sequencer. Um, start with a simple sequencer and export it out to the advanced sequencer. Then you can start seeing how uh, the advanced sequencer is set up uh, for an imaging run. You get a really good idea. And you can add to that. Um, you can uh, set loop conditions uh, uh, as examples. So we can add loop conditions. So in this case here, um, we're going to uh, loop until a certain time. So what that's going to uh, allow me to do is uh, set a time for the imaging run to uh, continue until that time is reached. So you can set for a specific time. You can set it for, um, uh, well, you can set it for different options. Some of them you won't necessarily apply, but uh, you can set it for, you know, nautical dusk, astronomical dusk. Uh, in this case here, I'm imaging through the night, so it's going to be dawn. So um, what I will do is I will set it for nautical dawn. And that's when the imaging sequence will um, stop. So uh, at uh, 6 uh, a.m., basically at 6 a.m., it's going to stop imaging. And it will then proceed to the closure instructions, which is the t uh, stop uh, the auto guiding. And then it will proceed to the uh, end sequence instructions, which are to warm the camera and park the scope. So uh, you can do that uh, very easily, uh, add that in, and uh, that's a, a really nice feature. You have on the side here, I'm not going to get into, this isn't a, a, a video about how to use the advanced sequencer. I can certainly do one if, uh, if there's interest for that. Um, this video was just basically to show uh, beginners, people that are new to, um, the uh, uh, new to Nina, uh, how to uh, start using the advanced advanced sequencer, uh, how to understand it better. Um, so I found, like I said, I found it was uh, easy to uh, simply um, start with a simple sequencer, uh, set up my imaging run, and then uh, continue on uh, by exporting it into the advanced sequencer, which I could then make use of some of the uh, the powerful uh, options that are available to us in the uh, advanced sequencer, which are all located on the side here. And you can you can click and hold and drag these into the specific areas uh, where they apply, or you can simply click on the plus button and ask, access them as well, which is nice uh, nice feature. Um, so it's up to you how you want to do that. So that is how I did it, and I hope that maybe this helps uh, clarify a few things for people so that they understand um, how to set up uh, a sequence and uh, how to export it over to the advanced sequencer if they want to start using and getting familiar with the advanced sequencer. Uh, that's, a, that's a really nice, simple way to do it. So Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks very much for tuning in again, everyone. Really appreciate that. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button and comment, uh, like I said before in my other videos. Um, the, the more interaction, the, the YouTube algorithm sees that. It sees comments, it sees uh, likes, and it uh, if you're watching the video uh, to the end, that's fantastic. Uh, it, it sees all that, and it helps... Um, get the video out to more people, uh, which is ultimately the goal of the channel is to help people in, with astrophotography and, and uh, all the uh, nuances within it. Um, so uh, your participation uh, in that is uh, crucial. And I really appreciate it because it helps the channel grow and it helps get this information out to uh, more people that uh, may not be aware of my channel and uh, might be looking for help in uh, certain uh, aspects of astrophotography, whether it's Nina or PixInsight or whatever it might be. So really appreciate you guys uh, uh, watching the videos and uh, commenting and liking. That's uh, fantastic. If you're not a subscriber and you uh, feel uh, that the video was helpful or any of my other videos were, uh, and you want to subscribe, that's great. Go go right ahead. I appreciate that as well. And uh, thanks very much for everyone who has subscribed and continues to uh, tune in. Okay, uh, that's it for now. I won't keep you any longer. Um, thanks very much for uh, tuning in, and we'll see you again real soon. Clear skies, everyone.